call it convergence theory, analysis of three different applications used in the same group. In a learning environment, forming a group is usually easy because the professor oftentimes assigns people to work together. Once that group is formed, how do individuals within the group come together to become interdependent? What binds them within that group? What causes a collective behavior to achieve a goal together? In the subject of group dynamics, this binding is known as convergence. Sigmund Freud, on the subject of convergence theory, stated, Crowd behavior represents the convergence of people with compatible needs, desires, motivations, emotions, whose membership in the crowd triggers the spontaneous release of previously controlled behaviors. Paraphrasing, Freud considered groups an extension to satisfy the repressed id of the human psyche. Later in the 1970s, a University of Minnesota professor, Ernest Borman, analyzed a series of small group interactions and developed a different approach to the convergence theory, in which he called his method a fantasy-themed analysis. He states that shared fantasies create a psychological need to be part of a group. Ernest Borman's symbolic convergence theory maintains that the sharing of group fantasies creates symbolic convergence. Several things occur when the fantasy is shared. The group applies a goal or purpose to the fantasy either through meaning, emotion, or motive for action. The fantasy distracts the group either through humor, imagination, or other personal reasons. Members create a unifying symbol based on that fantasy. Members of the group contribute to or reconfigure the fantasy and create a larger mythos and begin identifying to the fantasy. The fantasy becomes a theme for the group, and then the group expresses this theme through written conversation or other media. The group uses the theme to accomplish a goal or apply to the greater good. Using the guidelines for creating an effective group as viewed over a relative timeline, we will explore how our group tried implementing several attempts to use Borman's symbolic convergence theory in a practical application. Ironically, the application is research and deliver a presentation as a group on the subject of symbolic convergence theory. Guidelines for effective groups are establish clear goals, establish two-way communications, establish leadership and equal distribution of participation, ensure the use of power is distributed, be flexible in decision making, engage in constructive controversy, resolve conflict constructively. During the first two weeks of class, our group was formed by the instructor based on seating arrangement within the simple goal of working together to make a presentation and receive a passing grade. As a group, we shared our email addresses to each other. We agreed upon a group leader, John. John did preliminary research on our topic of symbolic convergence theory and sent a YouTube link to the group. He came up with the initial assumption of using the video to show during presentation. He wanted everyone's input about his premise and any suggestions about proceeding. One member of the group evaluated the video and found it lacked application to their specific agenda because it referenced research specific to England and Twitter, solicited money, and the majority of the video consisted of a talking head, one man talking to the screen with a headshot image. The rest of the group also did not like the fact of showing a video as the basis of their grade that they didn't make. Eventually, it was decided that six elements identified in the video specific to symbolic convergence will become the basis for research to the group. Tasks were redistributed and assigned. Six people research the topics, someone makes a video, and a couple people make a handout. During this time, the leader, John, wanted to bring the group together by creating a group name. This became the first attempt at symbolic convergence theory, create a group name. The suggestion became third leg. It was humorous. It had a technical meaning for the third phase of electrical power. It can be symbolic. It was a failure. 
It was only embraced by a few members of the group. It not, did not inspire additional embellishment or fantasy. This leads to the next attempt, which was make an action movie a trailer. <laughs> attempt via movie trailer got the guys involved. It was playful. It provided an action hero theme. It also was a failure. Even though the members participated, the video did not make a clear goal. Key video clips were missing. The group fantasy participation element was missing. The fantasy did not build to a larger mythos or reconfiguration. Time was running out to complete by the deadline. Several members share other classes together and were complaining about the lack of participation within the group dynamics class. After several different discussions, their general consensus was that they would fail the primary goal of passing if group members don't participate. Their analysis was that group members were distracted with their other daily obligations, some had a layer of disinterest or a lack of initiative, or some were content to observe. Overall, group cohesion was not present. Then Snowmageddon hit the school, and classes for two different dates that coincided with the group dynamics course and the group's normal meetup were canceled. Stuff happens. Unfortunately, this stuff compounded the lack of participation of group members, but did not delay the encroaching deadline. Members had not submitted anything to the group leader in three weeks since their last get-together. One member, frustrated by video clips not sent, combined with previous discussions, sent out a mass email. He had made a conscious decision to be that guy. The antagonist who creates conflict and spurs others to action. Hey John. I have no problems giving the rest of the group an F. I mean F this. You have asked repeatedly for research and input. Hell, you even gave topics to research and you have got zero response. If any of you think you didn't get any emails as an excuse, I am still going to give you F because you didn't speak up and interact with the group. Where's my video clips? Email or post something on YouTube or something. We're running out of time and we need to get this thing together. Based on his grammatical tone in his email, this member broke several accepted social norms and email etiquette by using cursing, threatening retaliation, overcapitalization of words, extra punctuation syntax. As a result, he risked ostracism, reducing his credibility, alienating members of the group further, and possible retaliation. Under the guidelines for creating effective groups, this occurrence would be to confront conflict and controversy. The method used by the member was to take a severe step outside of the group to create conflict, which in this case is to become that guy, or in the comic book world, to be the villain. The response was immediate. Members began sending research topic information to the group leader. Some decided to respond back to the antagonist's email. Take it easy, man. Not of all of us have the time to focus on just one thing. We haven't been in class in two weeks due to weather and shit happens. Act like an adult and stop cursing at people. If you would have asked in a respectful manner, I am sure this could have been handled in a better fashion. I will have all the research you need by the next class. 
I will also take the lead and do the PowerPoint presentation since you think we all just sit on our asses and do nothing. I have no problems taking this rude email to the professor and acknowledging your rude behavior. I do hope you apology to the group or this group will not work and we will all fail as one. There are no individual grades here. Get a grip, man. This member vilified the antagonist, criticized the tone, and threatened retaliation through the professor. The group leader also responded back to the antagonist. Thanks, as funny as this is thanks. It's funny that it takes your email to get people to send out things now when I've been asking for weeks. I'm sorry you had to play that bad guy just to get this info, but hell without that email I'm sure we would have still been waiting. The group leader recognized the intent of the antagonist and realized that the antagonist was able to focus the group to spur into action. The leader also, by replying back to the antagonist, uh, stopped possible a flame war and followed the guidelines for effective groups by trying to resolve conflicts. In review, the initial goal was to explore how our group tried implementing Borman's symbolic convergence theory in a practical application. The first attempt failed to create convergence because it was not embraced by the group. The second attempt was a failure caused by a lack of a clear goal. And the third attempt to unite the group was a success in which the members took initiative and began submitting their portion of the project. The, pro uh, the group was able to focus on their goal of passing the course and working together. The group, group was also able to unite against the accusations of the antagonists and vindicate themselves by showing progress to the group leader. In the case of symbolic convergence theory, the third attempt was a failure. The attempt needs an expansion of the fantasy element and contribution from each member. The group could take the comic book villain mythos to a greater extent while envisioning their personas as part of a superhero team. These themes can then be rewritten to morph into written communication or different media, like cosplay. Ultimately, more time and participation in the fantasy of superhero and villain would be required to be applied to satisfy the elements of Borman's symbolic convergence theory.